Thank you, Siobhan. Siobhan. So our, our next speaker is Dan Scanlon. Uh, Dan is a former governor of Castlery Prisoner and is here tonight representing the Friends of Sligo Jail. The Friends of Sligo Jail are a community group of volunteers with a keen interest in the jail and its place in the history and heritage of Sligo. The aim of the group is to provide community support for the conservation of Sligo Jail and, and to promote a, a greater understanding and public awareness of the history and heritage of the place. They, they also aim to uh, work towards the eventual opening of the jail to the, to the public. So Dan will talk to us tonight on conditions in the jail in those days. Ladies and gentlemen, Dan Scanlon. Good evening, everybody. So there you have it, the history of uh, Sligo Jail, which is present structure purposely built in 1815 and receiving its first inmates in 1818, which replaced the other penal establishments in Castle Street, Teeling Street and High Street. To understand conditions and prison life in general, it is important to remember that the clear ideas and ethos that the Victorians had about what prison should be. They should, in the views of the Victorians, be placed as a punishment for criminals by being uncomfortable, frightening and secure with the stated purpose of deterring people from committing crime. Indeed, they were later described as monuments to human cruelty. Prisoners were not allowed to talk while at work. They spent much time in the isolation of their cells, the purpose of which was to allow them maximum time to reflect on their crimes. It was indeed intended that all prisoners would be of single cell occupancy, but this objective was not achieved. And an example of the failure is reflected in the report in 1815, where references made to this wretched jail, which on the site of the present courthouse had nine apartments to house 120 prisoners. Sligo Jail, has been said, was designed for 160 prisoners, but at one stage in 1849, there were 291 prisoners in custody, which is the highest number ever recorded. It is important also to remember that at this time in Ireland, men, women and children were incarcerated in large numbers for various transgressions, and often what we might now call minor crimes, such as sheep, stealing and receiving stolen goods. This high incarceration numbers is reflected in the fact that in 1822, there were 178 prisons and bridewells in Ireland, in the various counties throughout the country. Startling figure, 178, hard to believe it. Prison life in Sligo Jail was harsh and in what was described at the time as a handsome and substantial building. As said previously, there was some reform made. In 1786, there was an inspector of prisons appointed. But even at that time, the, the Victorian ethos still prevailed. If we look at the, the, the handsome and substantial building that was described at that time, contrast it with an inmate's observation a century later, which described the jail as gloomy, a gloomy structure with low, long corridors and uh, with stone floors. It was a very mixed population in terms of gender and crimes and mental health. And in the latter case, in a report in February of 1828, there were 21 lunatics so described in the prison. So how did the prison operate? Upon committal to the prison, prisoners were taken to a reception area where they were strip searched and obliged to bath. Any marks or scars were recorded and they were issued with prison clothing. In later years, prisoners on demand were allowed to wear their own clothing, provided that they had exchanges and that their clothes were sufficient to wear and that they had means to wash the clothing. And wearing of prison clothing was also regarded as a dress of shame and degradation. The way they would be seen by the, they would then be seen by the governor, seen by the medical officer, and assigned to the various stores within the prison. So what was the typical day in the life of a prisoner in, in Sligo Jail? I haven't been able to get any daily schedule, but what I have done, I have got a um, contemporary schedule for Galway Jail, which would be reflective of the general prison regime. 
and, and from uh, do this different regime Monday to Saturday and separate for Sunday. So the Monday to Saturday regime, 6.30 a.m., bell rung, prisoners were woken, washing clean. We must also remember, of course, at this time, there was no inside sanitation. <coughs> 6.45, officers on duty, they unlocked the cells. At 7 o'clock, exercise. 8 o'clock, labour commences. At 8.30, prisoners breakfast. 9.30, labour in cell commences. 1 o'clock, prisoners' dinner, school and religious instruction. 2 o'clock, labour commences. 3.30, prisoners' exercise. 4.30 p.m., labour in the cells. 5.45 p.m., supper, school or religious instruction. 6.30 p.m., labour recommences in cells. 8 o'clock, bed. 8.30, lights out, and 10 o'clock, night watching and on duty. Then on Sunday, it changed slightly. So rather than getting up at 6.30, 7.15, the bed was wrong. Then they went to exercise at 9 o'clock, prisoner's breakfast. At 10 o'clock, they had prison, uh, pat patrols exercise, and the officers returned. Uh, then uh, shortly after that, there was mass. At 1 o'clock, prisoners' dinner. 1.10, officers on duty. 2.15, patrols relieved. So you can see they spent a lot of time in their cells on Sundays. At 2.20, there was more exercise. 3 o'clock, in cells, officers off duty, patrols on duty. 4.45, supper. 6.45, bed. 7 o'clock, lights out. And security locked at night time. That was indeed a very restricted regime. So, when I refer to they were assigned to work, what did the work consist of? The work consists of shoemaking, tailoring, tinsmith, carpentry, painting, glazing, and gardening for male prisoners. In addition, those sentenced to hard labour were forced to work on a treadmill, which produced water for sanitation and other purposes. On the treadmill, they would walk for 10 minutes, rest for 5, and walk for 10 more. And in many cases, they would have walked 14,000 feet in any given day. They were also oakum picking, which was the preparation of tarred fibre for use in shipbuilding. There was stone breaking and wood chopping. Female prisoners were employed in sewing, knitting and washing. And many articles manufactured in the prison were sold to the public on Saturday mornings in stores, manned by the prisoners. And the income that was derived from these sales went in a long way to make Sligo Jail self-sufficient, one of the very few in the country that was so looked upon. The prison diet consisted of, in, at breakfast, eight ounces of meal and one pint of buttermilk. At dinner, 14 ounces of whole meal bread and one pint of sweet milk, with one pint of gruel or porridge instead of one pint of sweet milk on two days each week. Some portions of potatoes were occasionally allowed. So it is easy to understand the harsh <coughs> regime that existed in this snapshot of time. I'm not going into too much detail because it will take the whole night and tomorrow to go through if we're doing team. But that's just an idea of what prison life was all about. It was a very repetitive regime. And the effect that imprisonment had is amply reflected. In the, and I'll put you a read for you, extracts from Michael Collins's journal, who was incarcerated here in April of 1918. <clears throat> Wednesday, April the 3rd. Sligo Jail is a short distance from the town. It is generally speaking like all other jails. It must be old, I think, from both the look and the plan. The cells are smaller than those I knew in Stafford and Wadsworth, but the same as in Mountjoy. The size, of course, doesn't make it a great difference. One doesn't get uh, appreciably more difference in, in exercise, sorry, in a cell 14 by 7 than in a cell 12 feet by 7. Now, he goes along Thursday, the 4th of April. Spent a hopelessly sleepless night. Don't know, as I was tired, I don't know why, as I was tired enough going to bed. The mattress was that awful thing. Reminded me of a half-filled half with sods of turf 
except that the lumps of the fibre do not seem as pliable as the sods of turf. Taken out on my own to exercise at 11.30, refused to take cigarettes unless I got my unless I got box myself to keep while on exercise. I eventually prevailed. Then we go on to Friday, April the 5th. Had another practically sleepless night. I suppose it's the effect of confinement and leisure. Damn confinement and leisure. Saturday, April the 6th. Has still another sleep this night. Must try and get this wretched mattress changed. And Saturday, April the 6th, I wish to God I wasn't in jail. <laughs> so we get the message here quite clearly that even the effect in a very short time that it's having on him. Sunday, April the 7th. Last night as bad as any, although I did get a new mattress, no relief. And then we go on to Thursday, April the 11th, another bad night's sleep. No doubt this sleeplessness will disappear as soon as I become accustomed to my confinement. And I just have two more extracts to read for you. Thursday, April the 11th. This is the most glorious April evening. Birds are singing and tripping. Beautiful sunshine. Even as it said, 12 by 7, I can feel the nature reclothing itself. It's very true, an evening in the open road. By standing in my cell, I can see Nocmere in the distance, or actually close at hand. It is at present bathed in the light of the sinking sun, and the cairn over resting here. And then we go along to Sunday, the 14th of April. Sunday, if it's anything, is the most dreary day in prison. It's the first place we go to exercise at all. It's the first place we don't go to exercise at all after dinner. And I suppose the official must be having some time off. Added to this, there are no uh, visits, no mail, and no letters. So that gives you a snapshot in time of what prison life for the inmate and from their perspective was all about. So, as I say, it's a short talk. I will answer any questions later that I, I have researched. It's remarkable that very little written material is available about Sniper Jail, even when we try to do research. We have the records of the prisoners and so on, but I don't propose to go into that now because it will take far too long and become far too boring. So, thank you for your attention, and I hope I have some information for you.